Welcome to Chris Cast episode 40, season 1, episode 40. It is, I believe, the 16th of November, 2020. And I just finished watching the final episode of the uh, season of last week with John Oliver. Last week tonight with John Oliver. And it was good. It was awesome. I love that show. I'm really happy to see Trump go just because now I can watch comedians without feeling disgusted at how low they go. But this episode is not about that. It is about build back better. It is about the reset, the global reset. It is about an exploration of every single conspiracy theory I've heard and more likely scenarios. And you can hear that right after the break. Mahalo. See you right back here. Hey there, uh, in the next segment you are going to hear me refer to 2030 as being six years away, and that's because my head's already in 2024. So I do realize that it's nine years away to 2030. So I just thought I'd do that, and to slow myself down instead of living in the future, I will now read you the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. And now, on to the next segment, where six years is actually nine upside down. Mahalo. Welcome back to episode 40, Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham, and this is where we're going to explore reset, 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 build back better, build back butter, build butter back, build back better. Uh, it is an exciting time to be alive, especially uh, these are the most interesting time if you believe that there is a global conspiracy towards depopulation and authoritarian oppression the world over, which I like uh, thinking about, but probably don't believe. I don't believe anything happens, really. I believe nothing actually happens in America. I believe that... um, Every single instance of despotism or control or oppression or fascism or any of that kind of stuff is really just opt-in, you know? Um, And so uh, I will be really excited to see if there's some sort of crazy baller move in the next, uh, I think, six years. Because a lot of these things are foretold to happen in 2030. Um, so 2030, we have six years, uh, that America is going to transition to a lower population, greener paradise where America and the world integrated together transitions, um, 
peacefully, violently, from a self-centered uh, nation-state-based, tribal, jingoistic, xenophobic, border-controlled, uh, racist, sexist, white supremacist, oppressive, um, xenophobic, if I didn't say that yet, appalling uh, Nazi state to a, a kind, beautiful Star Trek Federation. Now, uh, there's a great saying that is uh, never let a crisis go to waste. Hey, Google, who said never let a crisis go to waste? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things. Alexa, who said never let a crisis go to waste? This might answer your question. In the book Tribe of Mentors, short life advice from the best in the world, author Timothy Ferris writes, never let a good crisis go to waste. It's the universe challenging you to learn something new and rise to the next level of your potential. Well, I do not think that... Sorry, uh, I'm having trouble. Please try in a little while. I do not think that Tim Ferriss is the guy who came up with that. I believe it was someone like... Let me pause and find out for you. I know it because uh, it come... I thought Rahm Emanuel... Uh, said it, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. But apparently Winston Churchill uh, said never let a good crisis go to waste in the mid-40s as we were approaching the end of World War II. So, never let a good crisis go to waste. So we have, um, we have a reason to, um, to control people's movement, people's behavior, people's interaction, how people get together and congregate. We have the ability to get people off the roads. We have the ability to get people to stay in their homes and houses. Uh, we have the ability to separate the old in retirement communities and nursing homes and hospitals from the young. Um, this is a perfect time uh, to transition and reset uh, not just the, the country of the United States, but it's a perfect time to change everything. Uh, there are, there, you know, all these things first came out after the Great Recession in 2008 and 2009, 2010, whatever. But now they're really exciting, right? Uh, there were, there has, there was proof earlier this year that um, Gaia, the Earth, the environment, had a little bit of time to self-heal. And we know that the Earth and nature and us and animals and plants and the air and the biosphere, we know that they desperately are able to heal themselves. And I'll use an analogy. Uh, and they did over the summer. They did a lot of... Um, a lot of feral animals and wild animals incurred into, into um, populated areas and so forth. And my analogy is my heart disease, right? Um, I'm fighting that. And uh, the more stress that I take off, the more general stress that I take off my heart, the better chance my heart has, has of repairing itself, right? When I lose my all this weight it will take a huge strain off of my heart and my heart will be able to heal itself and the drugs and therapies that i've been given have been have been allowing my heart to heal itself i'm not even in heart failure anymore so like my body which is trying desperately to become healthy it's working towards health and my behaviors such as gluttony and sedentariness, and sloth, and all of the sins, um, it's making it harder and preventing and throwing a logjam into my body's natural attempt through uh, healthy eating, uh, being within um, healthy limits of weight and fitness, and uh, what I eat, how much I eat, the gluttony, 
the, the type of food, etc. These things are the log jam towards my body healing itself. Now, same thing can be said about uh, internal combustion engines and the resulting exhaust. Um, the use of gas and oil and the resulting um, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Um, the, the, the urbanization, the suburbanization, uh, the use of uh, the forest clearing in order to uh, either clear land for, uh, for raising animals or for using and or and or using that uh, that wood for Ikea, let's say, or for the production of North Carolina furniture or just the production of paper products that we use every day. Uh, the use of of uh, oil to produce uh, to produce Alexa stop. To produce, Alexa, stop. To produce, Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sorry. To produce, um, it's eight o'clock. That, that, that explains it. I have her reminding me things at the hour upon the hour. Um, using oil to produce plastics and so forth. And plastics are thrown away and, um, uh, we pollute the water, we pollute the air, uh, we produce, we pollute the water that we drink, we pollute the uh, water that, um, that nature lives in, we destroy biospheres, we make it impossible for animals to find their own homes, um, any number of things. And we just do not give the world uh, an opportunity to heal itself. Uh, we also have, hey, Google, what's the current uh, world population? In 2018, the population of Earth was 7,594,270,356. So that's seven and a half billion people on Earth, right? I do, I, I do not wish any of them harm. Um, I, I almost wish that if we're going to depopulate the planet or reduce population fairly, that we had a Thanos, uh, because he could snap his fingers and make it, make it, uh, um, uh, democratic or not democratic, not democratic, make it egalitarian where there is the blind eye of justice as to who, um, who needs to, uh, leave the world to offer space on it for, uh, for other people. Uh, it's the, it's that awful decision that governments need to make when they expect at the 11, 11th hour, 59 minute, 59 second, there to be a, a global therm thermal nuclear war who, uh, is, uh, worthy enough to bring into the deep underground bunkers and who needs to fry up on uh, the planet's surface. By the way, I'm up on the planet's surface. I want to be the first to die during a nuclear war. But that's the, you know, that is the, the challenge, right? Who, who lives, who dies? Um, so there's, I don't know if you uh, heard, but everybody is talking about three things. Build back better. The Great Reset. And, and no, there's just two. I think there's just two. Oh, three, uh, build back better, the great reset and the new normal. I knew I had three. And, um, let's talk about that after the break. Welcome back to episode 40, Chris Cast, 11-16-2020. Um, 
So, what is Build Back Better? Hey, Google, what is Build Back Better? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Building Back Better is an approach to post-disaster recovery aimed at increasing the resilience of nations and communities to future disasters and shocks. Thank you. Alexa, what is Build Back Better? Here's something I found on the web. According to actionaid.org.uk, Build Back Better is the mantra for the international humanitarian community for reconstruction work after disasters. Alexa, what is the Great Reset? According to Wikipedia, the Great Reset, How New Ways of Living and Working Drive Post-Crash Prosperity is a book published in April 2010 by Richard Florida, a professor at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management. The book puts into context Florida's urban development theories with the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 to describe the future of cities. Hey Google, what is the Great Reset? That's not a name I can respond to. According to Google Books, the Corona crisis and the need for a Great Reset is a guide for anyone who wants to understand how COVID-19 disrupted our social and economic systems and what changes will be needed to create a more inclusive, resilient and sustainable world going forward. Perfect. Thank you, Google. Um, so, if you are on the side of the Federation and believe that the future is going to look like Star Trek, you're pretty psyched about all these things. Um, it's going to mean that uh, nation states are going to be a thing of the past. There's going to be more of a focus on checks and balances internationally. Um, neighbors are going to help neighbors. There's going to be a global attempt at not bombing uh, current and former adversaries into <clears throat> into the Stone Age, but trying to um, reintegrate them into a global uh, family. Uh, and that's a, uh, I don't mean a kumbaya thing, but an active, in you know, the same goals uh, of the United Nations. Hey, Google, what was the initial goal of the United Nations forming? On the website un.org, they say, the United Nations is an international organization founded in 1945 after the Second World War by 51 countries committed to maintaining international peace and security, developing friendly relations among nations and promoting social progress, better living standards and human rights. I can totally buy into that, can't you? I mean, we'll go into people who can't in a second, all right? But let me hear what Alexa has to say. Alexa. What are, what's the goals of... I pronounce of... that has, but I'm always working on how I say things and I might not have it right. Alexa, what are the goals of the United Nations? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. The Millennium Development Goals are the eight targets of the United Nations. Did that answer your question? No. Thanks for your feedback. Alexa, what were the founding uh, goals of the United Nations? Sorry, I'm not sure. Well, I think that um, I think that uh, the initial answer was pretty darn good to me, but I would like to find out what the millennial goals are. Anyway, so if you're like me and you want um, international travel and you want to live anywhere on the planet and and you uh, you want to just jump on your motorcycle and uh, traverse the globe, then, and if you like Star Trek, and if you think that Star Trek is a beautiful uh, interpretation of the future, uh, then then you'll you'll like this. If you're more of a Star Wars kind of guy, and you believe that what this means is a an eventual, I know this is mixed metaphor, but if you feel like this is either um, the empire uh, taking over the planet and and restricting you and your way of life and your um, uh, your dominion over your own your own 
uh, home, your own town, your own village, your own city, your own state, then you're not going to like this. You're going to uh, look at later episodes of Star Trek and and be really concerned about the Borg. And you're going to see the United Nations as the Borg. You're going to see uh, world government as the Borg. As opposed to um, just just moving forward and getting along uh, in a world where... Uh, where we're probably going to overpopulate the planet and there'll probably be uh, incredible natural disasters that happen as a result of a of overcrowding, right? Like coronavirus, let's assume it was not designed as sort of a hybrid um a hybrid disease combining uh HIV and flu and this and that in a in a deep uh, lab laboratory in 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 Wuhan, China, and let's assume that it was just a an ev- a natural mutation resulting from uh from wild animals in in China uh, being introduced and uh like you know the way the weasels in in uh, the Nordic countries are now being uh, are now um, catching COVID and then in it being mutated into them. And then jumping back into the human population. Remember, we're animals. I mean, I know we, as a culture, feel like we have dominion over the world. But we're merely a a very successful species on the face of the earth. Like, I try to remember people, remind people to get rid of their damn hubris. That we are as vulnerable to overcrowding diseases, to sicknesses, to... Um, population collapses as as anybody else as anything else on planet earth uh, be it uh, algae be it uh, cod uh, be it um, lemmings perfect example uh, and so on and so forth um, we all know that if you if you uh, if you grow too many pigs in a pen uh, that they're not gonna not only are they going to uh, attack and fight each other, uh, but they will also start getting sores. They'll start getting sickness. The disease can become rampant. There are no uh, boundaries and so forth. So these collapses are going to happen naturally. So I, I think on the most benign level, Build Back Better uh, and in general, the World Health Organization benignly perceived um through the Federation eyes, it is, um, it is a beautiful thing. It is an essential thing. The United Nations has done a lot of work internationally, right? Um, however, if you, per, if you perceive it on the other hand, uh, where you see it as um, a, you are unwilling to give up anything that you currently have, and you believe that there's some sort of uh, borging or 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 uh, thought control associated with uh, a federation, which in fact will be a a hierarchical uh, vanguard of a proletariat uh, commanding and controlling the people of Earth in a very condescending, uh, terrorizing way. Uh, the way one might say that the intelligentsia of America constantly calls uh, deplorables deplorable. Like, are deplorables going to be happy with with um, liberal elite people, as they call them, getting more power on Earth and getting uh, a continuity of power across the entire globe and then at a greater level having more power over them in terms of their condescension and insult towards who they are? Right, you only see in Star Wars. You only see uh, the. Uh, it's like it's like we experience Star Trek in as though we're only experiencing the entire future of humanity from a nuclear class submarine. Right? I mean, obviously, submariners are our best and brightest people in the entire country, but they're also soldiers and they also have the kind of uh, mindset where they can uh, set off. Hey, Google, how many nuclear missiles are on a nuclear submarine? 
On the website FAS.org, they say, SSBN 726 class FBM submarines can carry 24 ballistic missiles with MIRV warheads that can be accurately delivered to selected targets from almost anywhere in the world's oceans. So, photon torpedoes, nuclear missiles, whatever, uh, 24 of them uh, that they have the training uh, to send out into the atmosphere to destroy enemy, right? I mean, if you think, if you put on uh, evil spectacles while you're watching any episode of Star Trek from back in the, uh, in the, um, uh, back in the first episodes from uh, the 60s, all the way through all the episodes coming to uh, the CBS All Access um, Star Trek below deck or bottom deck or whatever, you're going to see a level of uh, sadism, a level of noblesse oblige, which is fancy French for a noble obligation that the intelligentsia and the people in power have towards, honestly, uh, pedantically and condescendingly take care, like like as if pablum delivered by um, Spoon to the chubby face of a dumb baby. I mean, if you scratch a a um uh, uh an etonian uh oxford um stanford harvard princeton yale grad if you scratch them enough you will you will come up with any number of deep deep resentments and condescension and, and hostile anger that those people have towards uh the working class and and the and the uh uh, the uh, yeah the working class of of be it England or America deep deep condescension deep deep pity um, and I mean if you haven't seen it every single day for the last four years in America the endless 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 resentment towards towards I mean basically when you say Trump's base you're 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 insulting um at least 71 to 74 million american voters uh and that's a deep hate that's not oh look at them they know not what they do it's not a it's not a sweet it's not like the kind of sadness and love that a parent feels for someone of their own blood who is going through uh challenges and so forth it's the it's the resentment of that cackling uh patriarch who feels that he or she matriarch uh can use the wealth that they have as a millionaire slash billionaire uh that they the controls that they can have uh on the puppets that are their extended families and in-laws uh, when it comes to uh, being either included or excluded from the will. And depending on what side you are, either I I hereby, I mean, I've been attending Renaissance Weekend events, not recently, but I've been attending Renaissance Weekend events since 2001, 2002, uh, New Year's uh, down in Charleston, and I must tell you that I happily give the future of this country to uh, those 3,000 families. I think uh, that they do a damn good job. I think that if we have a future based on all of their merit, their love and compassion, uh, that America will be nothing but better. Uh, however, if you come from a hostile point of view, where all you can see in their vision is restrictions to land where you like to um hunt and and uh and and drive and ride and then taking away the guns that you're just gonna kill yourself and others with and if if in order to make the world a better place you have to give up too many of your own pleasures uh you're gonna see that future uh, which is honestly being run by those 3,000 families anyway, out of merit, not out of conspiracy. Um, 
you're going to see the future as a real hellish hellscape. You're going to see the Borg in everybody's eyes. You're not going to see um, Commander Picard. You're not going to see Captain Picard, who, you know, is the is the most enlightened being ever portrayed on television. Um, so it really depends on whether you think Captain Picard is the um, is the most evolved of all humans on planet Earth or a cuck pussy um, who you know, should, uh, go ahead and, um, die, uh, by being scalded by, um, his tea, um, to death. Anyway, come back after the break and we'll close up for now. I think that's enough to muddle in your brain and I'll talk to you soon. Welcome back to Chris Cast, Season 1, Episode 40. 40? I gotta tell you, probably have heart disease because of all the Budweiser 40s that I drank growing up, thinking that it would be cool because I lived in D.C. So, celebrate pouring out a 40 for the 40th episode. Anyway, my name's Chris Abraham. I'm damn glad to meet you. And you can find me at chris at abraham.su. You can find me at chrisabraham.com. You can tweet me at chrisabraham. You can insta me at chrisabraham. You can connect to me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash in slash chrisabraham. You can YouTube me at chrisabraham. You could find me. Uh, you can text me or WhatsApp me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can call me at that number, but I won't answer unless you're my bestie. And even so, I mean, why don't you email me or text me to let me know we're going to have a phone call soon? Uh, blah, blah, blah. You can set up a date with me on the phone on Zoom or on Uber conferences at uh, Calendly.com slash uh, Chris Abraham and slash 15 or slash 30 or slash 60. We'll, we'll talk as long as we need to. And um, I guess that's it. Is that it? Um, tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen. Uh, a biento. Uh, a tout à l'heure. Um, hasta la vista. Um, ciao. And all those other things. If you like this crazy, crazy ramble, ramble, rattle. And as you are... Uh, building back better, and as you are resetting for the new normal, I ask you to uh, comment and write a review and write a comment and uh, like me or vote me up or give me stars or whatever your platform does and subscribe to me. And I will talk to you in the next episode, episode 41. And I'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Bye-bye.